See your subject headings. The history and information of libraries most standard authority in cataloging, as presented by Sharon Lisby, who goes over define and describe, Melissa Hatterley, who goes over the history and its conclusion, and Victoria Knight over uses, advantages, and disadvantages. So, what is Sears? Sears is a way of cataloging that provides heading suggestions and then patterns for the users to follow in order to create a system. The Sears subject headings mesh with the Dewey Decimal System, which is already well known by librarians and users and pervasive in library systems. When combined, Sears and the Dewey Decimal System make cataloging and finding records easier for users and librarians alike. Sears starts out with major headings or categories that it provides to users, and then it provides guidelines for subcategory headings. It also provides a guidebook that is available to help with the classification of the subheadings and is updated on a regular basis. All of this is based on lists used by the American Library Association and the Library of Congress, but all of it is simplified in order to enhance the use of the system for smaller libraries which may not need the detailed cataloging of the Library of Congress. Some examples of different categories or ways to search for things in the Sears system are, for example, if you want to look for earth magnetism, you would use geomagnetism. If you're searching for genes, you would use the word heredity. For insurance, comma, group, you would use group insurance. For feelings, you would use emotions. And for cyclopedias, you would use encyclopedias and dictionaries. Minnie Earl Sears lived from 1873 to 1933. She organized the first master's degree course in cataloging at Columbia University in 1927. She worked for the H.W. Wilson Publishing Cataloging Company when she composed the Sears List. She composed the Sears List of subject headings in 1923 and the list of subject headings for small libraries from 1931 to 1933. Why Sears composed the Sears List of subject headings? After graduating from the University of Illinois with a bachelor's degree in library science, Sears worked in many libraries as a cataloger. While doing so, she, quote, discovered a need for a simpler, more universally accessible subject heading resource, end quote. Her goal was to, quote, produce something more suitable for their smaller collections than the already established American Library Association and Library of Congress subject headings, end quote. The thought was that much of the verbiage of the subject terms of the Library of Congress subject headings were not user-friendly for people outside of the community, the library community. Sears based her concepts on the Library of Congress subject headings, simplifying the terms wherever possible. Her purpose was to, quote, join the subject headings used in the dictionary catalogs of the Library of Congress and the American Library Association lists of subject headings used in dictionary catalogs, but not to replace them, end quote. Sears intended for her list to be kept brief and in her original work included instructions on how to keep the work down to a single volume. The composition of the Sears list. It is a pre-coordinate system which uses controlled vocabulary. It uses alphabetical subject lists with key pattern headings and subject subdivisions. There is no true thesaurus. It uses see also references. It's less technical language and less complex. Developed for small or medium size collection. The print version of the Sears list, quote, can be accommodated on desk and easily carried, while the Library of Congress subject headings, five large size volumes, are heavy, cumbersome to store, and not very portable, end quote. Further, the Sears list is cheaper, which fit the budget of the small, smaller institutions it was created for. How has the Sears list changed and developed over time? The first edition was based off the subject headings used by nine well-cataloged libraries. The first edition contained no cross-references. The see also references were added to the second edition at the request of cataloging teachers. It wasn't until the 15th edition that the see also references were clarified with related terms, narrower terms, and broader terms. While she never intended for her list to be used towards children's materials, quote, Sears has been the standard for school libraries for a long time, end quote. 
The Sears list was updated every five to seven years from the outset until 1988, and then every three years, and now every edition is updated based off of the way the world advances and changes. In its infancy, Sears subject heading was originally titled, quote, List of Subject Headings for Small Libraries, unquote. The initial plan of Sears was meant for smaller libraries, as the Library of Congress headings were too complicated in their detail and far too extensive for the smaller facilities and yet attempted to remain as close as possible to the LOC use of headings. This gave smaller libraries a better tool to use in order to teach cataloging in schools. These libraries gave Sears a change to correlate its classification scheme that was already in use to the very familiar Dewey Decimal System. By gearing this system to the small public and school libraries, topical, form, geographic, and proper name headings were much more simplistic over the LOC subject headings. The advantages were obvious. By allowing for a more flexible system, there were fewer terms, and by using common names rather than scientific names, it makes for less details and builds an overall complete list that is smaller and less expensive than the Library of Congress subject headings. This advantage for smaller libraries is that one volume is updated every three years, while the Library of Congress is updated every year and is contained within four volumes. The disadvantages to Sears are that there are certain subjects that are difficult to address in any kind of descriptive manner, namely biographies, nationality descriptions, literary forms, and government policy. While Sears can offer suggestions to these headings, it can be difficult to place the proper name headings to these particular topics. So, how are the Sears subject headings used? While conducting a simple word search on the Sears website, Preservation, 56 results popped up. By showcasing the first five listed, what is shown are the main topics listed for the word preservation. Listed in alphabetical order, a person researching is able to clearly see items listed for that word. Sears explains that its purpose is to list the word or phrase by the given topic in that collection. Whatever the word is, it is then promoted by topic. Whatever the authorized word or phrase combined with the cross-reference word is a core base for control subject heading. In doing this, the Sears list provides a basic vocabulary of terms, with the suggestions for cross-references that are more useful. In conclusion, despite its flaws, the Sears list has made considerable contributions to cataloging in public and school libraries. It is flexible and expandable, and where it doesn't cover every subject to the full list, which no list can do, the Sears list gives guidance where needed and authority control when wanted in cataloging to make a subject easily accessible to everyday users, exactly what a small public library or a school library needs.